Hello, Keith Rucker, AdventureMachinery.org. Well, guys, we're back on to the uh, Kurt Weiss restoration here. Um, in the last episode, we took it all apart, got all the pieces apart, and uh, off camera, I went and put this in the parts washer and, and gave it a good cleaning. Uh, but it's still got some gunk and what have you on there. We need to take it a step further, getting this thing cleaned up. Uh, it's got a good bit of rust on it. I'm probably going to soak this in some evapor rust and let it... Uh, uh, cook for a day or overnight or what have you just to clean it up. It's light rust. It ought to clean up pretty easily. I don't see any pitting, but uh, that's probably what I'm going to do there. Uh, but before I do, and I had several people comment on this, I've got a little tag on here. It's got the serial number and the model number and all that. I'd like to get this off so that we don't mess it up in the process and then we can reapply that afterwards. And it's held in place with a couple of drive screws. So let me zoom in here and kind of show you how we're going to try to get this off. So here's the plate, and you see it has the two pins in here. These are what's called drive screws, and I've got a drive screw. This is a brand new one that uh, I have from machine restorations or whatever. I bought a bunch of them a while back. So you can kind of see how it works. So there's not a head in this thing, and basically it just presses down into a hole. And there's kind of a spiral grooves on there uh, that will press down in there. Now, uh, getting these things out can be a real booger bear, and I know we had to do some on the LeBlanc lathe. It was a lot of work. Um, I've used a trick before. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Because this is actually a spiral, you can sometimes, if you can get a screwdriver on this, you can just unscrew them and they'll come out. Uh, that's what I'm hoping we're gonna do, but obviously we don't have any slots in here. So I'm gonna have to put a couple of slots in there and to do that, I'm just gonna use a little Dremel tool here with a little uh, a wheel on there. Very carefully try to go in there without getting onto the tag. Um, that's sometimes a challenge in itself. But I'm gonna see if I can uh, put a couple of grooves in there and see if we can get lucky and unscrew this thing. <laughs> I didn't get a very good job of getting in the center. <laughs> See if I can do better on this one. That's better. See what I may do. Try one going this way. Let me uh, grab a screwdriver and see how lucky we get. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. All right, so plan B, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to grind the head completely off of that and see if we can get it off and leave a little stub sticking up. Here we go. All right. Well, guys, I carried the vice out here to the museum, and uh, we're going to put this over in the bead blaster and get, a, get all the old paint and all the old gunk and everything off of this. I've got some machine surfaces on here that I want to protect, the top and the bottom primarily. So uh, to protect those while I'm blasting it, I've just taken some duct tape, and I've covered these up. And uh, that should, uh, you know, and I'll make sure I try to avoid blasting in those areas, but that should keep any uh, damage from happening there. So again, on the top, as well as on the bottom, uh, it's all covered up. So we're gonna go put this in the blasting cabinet. I'll probably do it off camera. You really can't see much while I'm doing that. And uh, I'll get you a close-up shot of this before and after. So there's a before shot. You can see all the uh, duct tape on there to protect things. So. Uh, let me go out there and get to work. Well, there you go, guys. After the bead blaster, we got it all cleaned up. Got a good surface ready now, prepped pretty much for painting. Um, I think I am gonna go ahead and um, put this in a rust and let it get the rust off of it before we do, but it's cleaning up nice. 
All right, so we're back in the shop here at my house and we got this it's all cleaned up. I got my duct tape pulled off. Next thing we wanna do is get this thing really cleaned up with all the rust and uh, I found that Evaporust really does a really good job on that. So that's what we're gonna use. I need to submerge this whole vise in that. I've been looking for a container to use and uh, I found this, of course, that's full of holes. Uh, but that's just the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a uh, just a plastic bag here, garbage can liner, and we'll put that down in there to create a uh, watertight uh, area for it. Um, one thing I want to do is. In addition to the top, the bottom also has a good bit of rust on it. So I wanna make sure that that stays where it'll, it'll clean on that as well. So I'm gonna put a couple of spacers down here in the bottom. Let me run over here and grab a couple things. So I just need some spacers and all I'm gonna do is just use some washers and put up underneath the bottom. I'll put four of them in there. And that right there will make sure that the uh, evaporust gets up underneath the bottom and this isn't just sitting right on the plastic. And with that, we should be able to just drop this down in there. There we go. And now, fill her up. Let me go grab some evaporust and we'll fill that up. All right, I got about two gallons in there and uh, we're just gonna let it work its magic. I keep this stuff, I reuse it over and over again. Um, I had some old stuff I put in here and I also put in probably about a gallon of new stuff and uh, we'll drain this off and save it and use it again. I actually got some other things I need to soak in here so while I've got this batch going, when I pull this out, I'll probably put a few other things in there and uh, clean them up while we, we got a good batch here. But there you go. Uh, we're just gonna let it sit and I don't know how long probably at least a couple of hours. I may leave it overnight and fool with it tomorrow. We'll just, uh, we'll come back and check it out in a little bit. So we've had this uh, by soaking in here overnight, probably a little bit more than that, a little over 24 hours. And uh, I moved it over here by my sink. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and uh, get it washed up and we'll see how it does. All right, I got a little um, scotch Bright pad here. And I like to just uh, use that to hit it and that usually takes off anything that's still on here. So the top cleaned up nice. We got the rust off, but there's definitely some staining on here. And we'll probably deal with that. Bottom looks about the same. We got still a little uh, staining on here where we had some rust, but uh, for the most part, it cleaned up really, really nice. The rust is gone, but yeah, that staining isn't really, I mean, it's, it's definitely etched the surface a little bit, but it's not really pitted per se. So uh, we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do about that. But all in all, cleaned up nice. All right, I'm gonna get this out and we'll uh, get it back over there and get it prepped up, do some painting. So after getting it out of the, the water there, I dried this thing down really good with a rag and then I actually took the air compressor, blew it off, got it real good and dry. Uh, I took some blue painter's tape, put on the top here. This is uh, just to protect those uh, machine surfaces uh, from getting any paint on them. And the rest of it pretty much gets painted. Now, as for color, uh, you know, Kurt uses a blue. When I say blue, it's blue. Uh, in fact, I call it an obnoxious blue. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't go to the trouble to try to perfect paint match this, uh, the blue that they use. I went to Lowe's and I found uh, the most obnoxious blue that I could find. This is a Rust-Oleum Sail Blue, number 7724, uh, and a Rust-Oleum paint, and um, that's what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, 
put a coat on this and uh, we'll let this uh, dry overnight before we come back out here tomorrow to, to mess with this thing some more. So um, I'm just gonna get a good coat of paint on here and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Let that dry overnight and uh, we have a nicely painted uh, obnoxious blue, <laughs> Kurt blue uh, casting here. Wow, what a difference it makes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tape off. All right. It looks good. All right, so uh, the next big question for me is, do I leave these surfaces like this or do I go put it on the surface grinder and um, get that ground down? Hmm, I'm we'll gonna have to ponder on that for a minute. I'll be back and tell you what we're gonna do. All right, guys, I've been, um, evaluating this situation, trying to decide what I'm gonna do. So, you know, the easy thing, I could put this up on the surface grinder, just get this ground down flat, get it nice and uh, trued up. The issue with that is, and I don't know that it's gonna be a big issue for me, but these vices, when they come from the Kurt factory, they're all exactly the same height, so that you can gang two vices together and put something across two vices and uh, they're the same height. So if I grind on this, I'm gonna take it down below that factory height and in theory, uh, you know, that could cause me problems down the road or if somebody else gets this vice after me and tries to use it with another Kurt vice. Now, as of right now, this is the only Kurt vice I have. So, you know, it's really not a big issue for me. And uh, the next question is, is how much am I gonna have to take off of this to clean it up? So I've uh, got a test indicator or just on a, on a little surface gauge here. And I've been going along, you know, kind of looking at how deep these pits are in here. This side's not too bad. Uh, this side, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, this, this indicator is the zero and the one is a, thousand, ten thousand, it actually measures to 50 millionths, um, which is probably a lot more accuracy than what I need for this one, but it was handy over there. But you know, I'm, I'm running within a thousandth on this side. So I go over on this side, however, and let me re-zero that, get it close anyway. And you know, we got some pitting over here that's approaching two thousand steep. Um, so, you know, to clean this up, I'm probably going to have to take somewhere between two and three thousandths of an inch off of it. I'm leaning toward doing that. You know, when you say these vices are the same height, even if I take three or if I take five thousandths off of it, for typical milling machine work, you know, that's that's not going to be a problem, even if I gang them uh, vices together. And if I do get another Kurt vice, I'll probably restore it. Maybe I can uh, take them down to the same height. I don't know. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go put it on the surface grinder and we're going to grind this face in. Now, um, I did come in here beforehand and uh, I stoned both sides. I stoned this side and the bottom side. Now, some people say, well, what about the bottom? You're going to grind the bottom. I stoned the bottom. You know, yeah, we got a little bit of pitting in here too, but I'm not as worried about the bottom because it's a large surface area. It's gonna be face down. Um, you know, you just want to have a good surface area. And after stoning it, you know, there are no real high spots on here. So even if some of these little dark places are a little bit low, I don't think it's gonna really matter in the grand scheme of things. So we're gonna leave the bottom as it is. And we're gonna take this down whatever it takes to clean it up. So let me go get my surface grinder set up and uh, let's do this. We've got the vise up here on the magnetic chuck now. I've deburred the chuck, stoned it, deburred the bottom of the vise, got everything good and flat. Uh, this is up on here. I've already touched off. I've swapped out wheels from the one I was using before. This is a real open grain coarse wheel which should do good on this cast iron. One thing I'm trying new is I've got this uh, Noga cool mist here. Uh, just bought this for the surface grinder. And uh, 
I've touched off. I'm just going to take a probably about a half a thousand and let's uh, get her feeding in here and let her roll. Interesting what we got here. It only touched over here where this fixed jaw is on this side. Now I expected that fixed jaw area to be the highest because there's no wear up under it where you had wear down here. But it didn't touch off on that side. So, you know, we're, you know, I wasn't taking hardly any. It was maybe a couple of tenths off of this side. But uh, makes me wonder how parallel this thing was when I left the factory. All right, I'm going to feed down uh, 1,000, and we're going to take another pass here. Let me go the other way. Let's see what we get. That's good. It's taking... Uh, Pretty well a clean cut all the way across. Got a couple little voids in here. I expected that. We measured about 2,000 uh, on the indicator. I've only really cut about a thousandth off of it. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and down feed another thousand, and then we'll probably see where we're at and decide what we need to go from there. Guys, we have uh, about got this thing ground down. I'm uh, taking one last little pass here. I just put it in a slow, mo slow mode here, so uh, I'm not taking near as much off, or it's not going as fast. Uh, and I'm hoping that's going to give me a little bit better finish on the final product. So uh, we're going to let this run across and see what she'll do. I'm off the grinder. Uh, everything looks really nice. I got a nice clean finish. Uh, we cleaned up all the rust marks and the pitting. Um, it, I had to clean, it, all in all it took five thousandths to get it to clean up. And uh, you know, quite honestly, I can still see one little tiny speck in there, but it's not enough to, this, it, it even bothers me. But uh, anyway, it took five thousandths to clean it up. Uh, the last pass was just about a tenth, and I just I put it on slow mode and got it cleaned up. Really look, really looks nice. You know, on my surface grinder, I'm seeing a little bit of a pattern in here, and I think that um, I need to spend some time adjusting the, uh, the sleeve bearing that's in it to see if I can. I think it's got just a little bit of play. I was curious. I, I wanted to see if if you could actually pick up a ripple in this. I can see the mark across it. I put it over on the surface plate and I used my uh, uh, test indicator that measures down to 50 millionths and quite honestly I couldn't even 
I couldn't even see it, it moving uh, even at, at 50 million. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident it's a nice flat surface. I'm sure at some point there is a little bit of a, of a ripple in there, but um, like I said, I can't even measure it with a 50 thousandths indicator or a 50 millionths indicator. So um, I'm pretty happy with how flat that is. Uh, so I think that this casting is pretty much ready. Um, I'll tell you what, I still need to do one thing. I need to put the tag back on here. Now that blue is not a bad match actually. Um, tell you what, let's, uh, let's see about doing that real quick and then we'll call this uh, episode done. So this is about where the tag was originally. We're gonna just drill some new holes uh, since we weren't able to get the old ones out and uh, put it back in here. So um, I measured over there with my calipers on one of the drive screws to see, uh, see it was about a little bit right, right there, what size hole I needed. It's a number 45. So I'm gonna get it started there. And I'm just gonna use a hand drill here to drill this. See how deep that is. Yeah, I think that'd be plenty deep enough. We'll line up here. Just using the uh, hole in the tag as a guide. All right. So my tag. Go right there. I've got some uh, brand spanking new drive screws over here. Here's my little trick for putting these in. I, I actually put them through the tag and use the tag to kind of hold them in place. Uh, they're, they're so tiny, they're just difficult to keep going. Tag is installed. There we go. Looking good. Looking really good. Looks like a totally different vice, doesn't it? Wow. Okay, moving on. All right, that's going to be a wrap on uh, this episode on the vice restoration here. It's coming along really good. Very pleased where we're at. Uh, up next, we got to do some work to the jaws, both the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, uh, and to get those ready to go back on here. And uh, we'll continue on with that one in an upcoming episode. Uh, be on the lookout for it. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.